Good morning, YouTube. Let's dive into a little comfort food today, why don't we? Okay, how about meatloaf with gravy? Oh, it doesn't get a whole lot better than that. And this version is to die for. All right, let's cook y'all. We got a family to feed. All right, so I got, I don't know, two tablespoons of butter, and we're gonna put that on medium low heat. And we're adding one diced onion. It's a small onion. And four or five cloves of garlic, all minced up. All right, we're gonna let this just sit, simply sit here and sweat over medium lowish heat. We wanna get them nice and soft and those flavors to mingle. So that's all there is to look at at that point. I'm gonna prep the rest of what we need. With the sizzle. All right, it's actually going a little higher than I wanted to, a little hotter. So I'm turning it down just a fraction. We're doing some prep work over here. All I'm doing here is got some fresh thyme, some breadcrumbs. I gotta go find some beef broth. I got a couple pounds of ground beef. So I'll get all that stuff together. While this onion and garlic sits here and does its thing. Oh, you know what I do want to do? Season it. Good pinch. Let's do two pinches. Kosher salt. And I can't do that one handed. Wait a minute. <laughs> there we go. A little bit of black pepper with my other hand because I don't want all of it. There we go. That's it. All right. Nice. It's all tender. It's all fragrant. It's beautiful. All right. So here is our fresh thyme. Got about a tablespoon. Kelsey, does that show up well? Yeah, my stomach just grows. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna eat That is perfect. Guess who's ready for dinner? <laughs> All right, our, our time goes right in here. That just made my day. Yes. And to this, we're gonna add a couple things. We're gonna add, this is tomato paste. I've got about a tablespoon. <laughs> we're gonna keep our heat medium low. A little bit of beef broth. I got about four ounces and about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. You notice we're layering, layering in some pretty intense, rich flavors. Everything will actually cook once we add it to the ground beef mixture. But at this point, we're mixing these ingredients so that this mixture is homogenous. Well, it's not gonna be homogenous. Okay, chemistry geeks. Don't, I don't wanna hear it. This is as mixed as possible, okay? Why? Well, because when we add all of this to our ground beef, we don't wanna to have to mix the ground beef any more than necessary. So the more mixed this is at this point, the less we will have to mix to really incorporate everything in a minute. And on top of that, I mean, it doesn't have to be like cold, super cold, but you don't want to put hot ingredients into ground meat. So I'm taking it off the heat and out of that cast iron skillet. This cast iron, of course, holds heat. I just burped, yeah. This is what happens when your assistants are all 12 year olds. <laughs> your brothers were bad I really did and then my delicate beautiful little daughter gets on the T gets on there <laughs> and you're, you're awful all right so we're spreading this out and that's just to let the heat dissipate as much as possible you really not a whole lot more that you can do to it than that all right here we go this we're gonna give about 10 minutes to come down and heat the only other things that we have to do two pounds of ground beef and this ground beef is 7% uh, fat, 93% lean. I really suggest you go with something lean. This is, this is a lot of moisture and a lot of intense flavors over here, so you're not gonna have to do more than that. And I forgot our eggs. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and give this 10 minutes. Got our ground beef, got our bread, bread crumbs. I'll get our eggs, we'll let our oven preheat, and I'll come back, we'll put it all together, and hopefully we will feed this pathetic child. <laughs> All right, we ready? Okay, so our onion mixture 
yeah, it's just barely, there's a little tiny bit of warmth left, but not enough to shake a stick at. I don't want this wooden spoon. Hang on a second. There we go. And I want some, oh, all right, here's the thing. I'm gonna put my hands in this in a minute. Why? Because they're the best tools that we have. Do I have enough sense to wash my hands? Yes. <laughs> so we put all of our onion mixture in with our two pounds of ground beef. We have about three quarters of a cup of just plain old bread crumbs. We have two eggs that I beat up. And final thing, we seasoned the onion mixture. We have not seasoned the beef mixture. So two teaspoons kosher salt. And then this is something that I make. It's equal parts, onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper, and kosher salt. This is SOS, I've been using it for years. We we'll used a little bit of salt. So I'm giving it about a tablespoon there. You can easily just give it a teaspoon of each of those ingredients. Now we're gonna dive in. And as I mentioned earlier, you really don't wanna over mix ground beef. The more you mix it and the more you compact it, the more of a chance that you're going to have just like a hockey pack. It's going to get tough. Got the oven preheating to 350 degrees, by the way. But I think we're just about there. But that's about right, y'all. Okay, I've got a baking sheet. And we're just going to transfer it to our baking sheet and form a loaf. <laughs> And because this is relatively low in fat, this was the 7937, okay? It's not gonna release a whole lot of juices or grease. A little bit, it will a little bit, but not too much. That is perfect. All right guys, 350 degrees. I'm gonna put it in there for right about one hour, just a shade less than an hour. I'm gonna go scrub my hands and we're gonna come back. I'll show you how to make it green same one we used to do the onions. Now, the reason I'm using this exactly the way it is, because there's still a lot of nice flavor down in here. We want to capture that. And here's how we're going to do it. We've got three cups of beef broth. And as much as I do stuff from scratch, y'all, even I don't make my own beef broth very often. Every once in a while, okay, this is beef base. This stuff's magic. If you're really trying to make something taste like roasty, delicious, homemade, pretty good stuff, I tell you that. All right, so I'm putting that in there. There's about two tablespoons. Anyway, about once a year, usually around Christmas or New Year's, I will do a prime rib, and then I have all the roasty, yummy, bone goodness left over, and then I'll make my own beef broth. But right now, I just use the box stuff. I get the low sodium box stuff and I fortify it with that beef base and it really makes a difference. All right, that's about a mm, two teaspoons of Worcestershire salt. And you really wanna be careful with salt because the boxed stock, boxed beef broth can be salty and the beef base is salty and Worcestershire sauce is salty. Woo, that's gonna be good. But your gravy can turn out really salty if you're not careful. Okay, Booney right here for a minute. This is about three tablespoons of cornstarch, about half a cup of beef broth. Tell you what, I, I'll tell you how I measured this stuff. I used, what, half a cup in the meatloaf, and then I used three cups to go in the gravy thing over here, and then this is just what was left, okay? So if you buy a quart box of beef broth, you'll use the entire quart for the recipe. All right, so that was our cornstarch, and you're just mixing it up. You kinda wanna give it a good bit of a stir so you don't have any uh, lumps or bumps or what have you. That feels good. And you can trickle it. See if you trickle it, you can kinda tell if it's mixed. And here's the thing with cornstarch, it'll mix up right away, but it settles real fast. So don't waste time on that part. And if you mix this ahead of time, your cornstarch part, oh, see, look, there's a little lump right down there at the bottom. 
if you mix your cornstarch and beef broth up ahead of time, give it a good stir right before you incorporate it into your gravy. dealing with canned or boxed broth or stock, one of the number one ways you can have to really make it taste homemade is to throw some fresh herbs in there. You're going to fish most of that out, okay? We have a new next door neighbor, and boy, he's got a dog that talks all the time, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a little bit of fresh thyme, and I'm throwing in just fresh parsley. That will make that broth seem like you've made it from scratch. Okay, just like flour, cornstarch has to come all the way up to a boil until it'll really thicken. And we're just going to let that sit and simmer. We got uh, 15 minutes left before meatloaf comes out of the oven. We'll be ready to eat, y'all. Why do they call it meatloaf? Why not make like a giant meatball, a meat sheet, or sculpt it into a giant meat horse? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> meat sheet. <laughs> I want to make up my bed with meat sheets. <laughs> All right, we are out of the oven. We hit 150 degrees. That's too hot. I'm going to leave it there. And our gravy is ready. I've got it on low, low heat. You can see it's thickened up and it's nice and glossy. It also tastes divine. But we're gonna let it rest. If I cut that now, it's just gonna fall apart, okay? Not that, you know, honestly, tell the truth, structural integri integrity does not matter to me most of the time. But I'm gonna try to give you a little shot of what it looks like with about 10, 15 minutes of resting. All right, so our meatloaf has rested for a few minutes. Still nice and hot. And our gravy is over here. I did pull out all the, um, the herbs. Let me tell you, this gravy, I could serve it in a teacup. This is not gonna work. I need a better method of this. I <laughs> had an argument. I actually had an argument with a friend of mine not long ago about cream gravy versus brown gravy. And I kind of have been straddling both camps. I mean, I'm a southerner. Cream gravy, you know, it's got it going on, but dad want good brown gravy. Okay. Cream gravy. All right, I think this is still gonna fall apart a little bit. If it does, I apologize. It doesn't affect the way it tastes at all. And if you're patient, oh, maybe not. And you wait a little longer than I waited, you will not be as subject to your meatloaf disintegrating. What, what, one more pea spoon? Sure. All right. So I have a big batch of mashed potatoes in the oven. Whoop. which is perfect for this situation. Look, I get to eat this piece. Are these mine? Oh my gosh, this is so good. Are you gonna eat this much? That's a lot. Oh. Okay, guys. That is delicious. Is good on top of better. <laughs> I just need this piece. I can use a fork. Mmm. Y'all, I should. I should get like a night hood or something for that. <laughs> 